Well, welcome everyone once again to our message for Sunday. We're really glad to, to see you and it's another opportunity for us to plug in as a family to the Word of God and an opportunity to plug hopefully into your lives. And if today maybe you're here and you're not part of our family, our specific church family, you are very welcome uh, to this opportunity just to plug into the Word of God. I'm really excited today uh, about what I'm going to share. Now we've been on a bit of a trend, I think, the last few occasions thinking about this idea of God in us. This idea of God in us. And so I've titled my message today, Permission Granted. Think about this whole idea of, of permission and access. Now, in today's world, computerized world, we have what we call a access environment, one where we are allowed in or out of areas, and it's normally controlled by computers in some way or some form. So you'll go around and there'll be symbols and there'll be messages that are coming to us to tell us whether we can get in or out. On our computers, we're told, well, can you get into this program or can't you get into this program? Do you have access or not? And many of these, these messages are telling us, well, you have the right to enter or you don't. You have the right access code or you don't. And so we're very much controlled by these messages and these ideas in this day and age, this technical day and age. Well, I want to talk about this whole idea of the, the, the principle and how you apply that principle when it comes to our relationship with God and how we relate to God and how we access God or how God access our lives. Now, for us as Christians, we're here. The starting point for us is one of salvation and God having access to our life. And I believe that is a powerful thing. For us as Christians, that's a powerful thing. If you're here today and you don't know about that, I hope today you'll be encouraged by that and inspired by the idea of God having access to your life because it is an incredible thing. Now, I just want to refer you to uh, earlier on this week, we had a midweek devotional and we were talking in this midweek devotional about the same power, the same power. And the scripture talks about the same power that raised Christ from the dead is the same power that is in us. And I really wanted to capture that thought, and I believe that God was really speaking to us about this whole idea that the same power that raised Christ from the dead is the same power that we have in us, and that what is in us is one of the most powerful things we can have. Not what is outside of us, the external, but what is in us. And what is in us, it says, is greater than that which is in the world. And those things that are outside of us, those things are, 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 that maybe could seem to control us, actually what's in us, what God has put in us, is more powerful. I want us to just focus on this whole idea of what is in us and the whole idea of God's access to our lives. Let's, let's start by reading Ephesians 3. I'm going to read to you Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 20. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom the whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together of all the Lord's people to grasp how wide, how long, how high and how deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever this whole idea of his power at work in us God's access to us and in us it says that in this scripture it talks about this idea of God having that access and that actually that power to strengthen us through his spirit in us it's an incredible thing now I'm just gonna ask some key questions about this whole idea because we're talking about permission granted what permission have we given God to access our lives? What permission have we given? Because we gave permission, if you were saved, if you're saved here and you're listening to this, you have given God permission. You gave God permission at that point of salvation. And so he entered your life. But what is the ongoing process for you in that? Has it stopped there? Let me ask you some questions. How does God's power work in you? Well, it works by you giving him access. How much of God is working in you? How much access does he have to your life? Honestly, how much access does he have to my life? These are some pointed questions, aren't they? Questions that maybe can, can cause a reaction. 
if you're listening to me and you're in a certain place, it can maybe cause a reaction. I hope today it motivates. I hope today it encourages you. I hope today it challenges you. But this is idea of access to God and God's access to you is crucial for us to really resolve. So the starting point for us was salvation. But we gave God access at the point of salvation. In, in different points, at different times in your life, when you came to faith, that's when you gave God access to your life. That's when that, that moment happened where you opened up your life and God entered in and began to bring transformation. And he began to do what he wanted to do in your life, in your life through you. Now, the issue is not whether God loves us or whether we love God, but ultimately, I believe who we will become in God because of God in us. What will our life be like because of God in us? What will ultimately happen through us because of God in us? These are the questions. These are the things. These are the things that, that preoccupy me about what can God do through me? What will he, will he do in me? Uh, and what will he do to that, those situations, those things around me because of him being in my life and in me? So let's think about this whole idea of access and access to God and God's access to us. And, and these things can be maybe in conflict with each other. Let's think first about permission. God's permission to us, the access we have to God. See, God has given us access through salvation to him. He's opened up the way for us, the Bible tells us this, through his grace. Hebrews 4, verses 14 to 16, tells us this. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven... Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet did not sin. Let us then, this is my favorite bit, let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence access to God. The scripture is telling us that we can access God with confidence because of his grace. So God has given us access. God's agenda and heart and uh, throughout all time, all generations has been to give us access to him, our creator, to him, our savior. He wants to give us access. And so he says that in this, he has given us access. He says that he, we can now approach God's throne with confidence because of his grace. 1 John 5 verse 14 says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of him. It's a powerful message again. We have what we have asked of him. This is the confidence that we have in approaching God. We can have confidence in approaching God. And it says that if we ask anything, According to his will, that's a key point there, and we could go down a whole other road if we wanted to about that. According to his will, it says that we, if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. We can have that confidence. We have access to all the provision of God, his will, his good will for us, his, his desire for us. We have access to that. This is an incredible thing. It's there. It's open. It's, we have permission it has been granted to us. Our job is to go in and, and, and take advantage of that, that, that permission that we have to delve into God, to swim in who he is. And, and, and we've only just scratched the surface. I've only just scratched the surface of who God is. And even I know that there is so much more to come. And so I want to just delve, delve further, delve further into him. Now I want to think about this idea of God's access to us. This is maybe where the key thing starts, because the issue isn't necessarily whether we have access to God. It's does God have access to us? Again, the beginning of that access is in salvation. Ephesians 1 verses 13 to 14 says, And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. Here's the key bit. Who is a deposit... Something that goes in, deposit, guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. The promised Holy Spirit who is a deposit. So that Holy Spirit was part of that salvation, that salvation event for us. And the Holy Spirit was deposited in us, it says. And it is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. So God's access to us began at that point. 
but will it stop there? Does it stop there for you? Has it stopped there? There's the challenge for you. This is only the beginning. We need to move further from this point. I want to move further from that point of, well, yes, God came into my life at that point and I received from God at that point. But has it stopped there? How do we get better at giving God permission to our lives? Because I believe we need to improve in this. We need to improve in giving God access because he can do all kinds of things, but it's about whether he has access. He is immeasurable in, in, in his capacity to, to give us things, to, to empower us, to enable us, but we may have to give him access. Well, how do we do this? Let's think about some ways that we can do this, some basic ways we can do this. With the right attitude, the right heart. See, our heart is key in this. Our heart, whether it is hard or whether it is soft, is key in this. 1 Peter 3 tells us this, verse 15, but set Christ apart as Lord in your hearts, being ready always to give a defence to everyone, asking you a reason for the hope you have. Set Christ apart as Lord. Is God Lord in our lives? Is he at the head? Is he the first that we call upon? Is he the one that, that controls and the, that directs us? Is he that for us? See, here's a common misconception or a common mistake that we can often make in our journey of faith. And maybe we communicate this to others without meaning to. But it's this idea that actually what happens is, is we, we do our lives, we do, we do our Christian life, and we walk through life. And we, we, what we actually do is we stick God in our back pocket. We just kind of stick him there in our back pocket and he comes along for the ride. And we do what we do and we, and we make our decisions and we, we go through our life. But God's just kind of along for the ride. And, and maybe we might get him out of our back pocket every now and then. It's just, yeah, OK, here we go. But when it comes to our thoughts and our plans and our intentions, he's kind of just there in the back pocket, just, just along for the ride. Some of us, maybe we have God waiting on the sidelines like a substitute. In, in our game, in the game of our life, we have him there as a substitute. And, and then every now and then we might just call him on and say, OK, yeah, you can come on in this bit, God. But actually, he should have been in the first team because he's your best player. He's the best player in your life. But we have him on in the substitute bench because we'll call upon him if we need him, if, if he's essential or, or if there's a moment of crisis, we'll call upon him. We've all been guilty of that. Is that real access? It's not, is it? He should have been first and foremost. He should be first and foremost in the first team, playing on the front line in our life. This is key. So number one, we need to have the right acts. We need to have the right attitude. We need to have hearts that are open to him, that give him access, give him permission into our lives. Next, we need to put that, that heart into action. We need to put that, that attitude and that mindset into action. Romans 12 verses 1 and 2, we know it well. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Three things it tells us to do there. Three things when, we, when we're looking to put into action this heart, this right attitude, this heart, we put it into action and there are three things it tells us to do. Number one, it says, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. I'm all yours, God. Whatever you need me to do, whatever I can do, my whole body is offered to you. A mind, body, spirit, everything is offered to you. Number two, it says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. Therefore, the thoughts and the mindsets and the attitudes that come with the world, with, 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 with those with those atmospheres and environments that are not of God, what comes with that? It says, do not conform to those things. Do not be held ransom to them. Do not follow them. Do not follow those mindsets. That's a challenge in this day and age. We can be swept along by many things, many ideas, many thoughts. There's many things that demand our attention. No, you should think like this. No, have this attitude, have this mindset. It says, do not conform. If we're going to put this attitude of, of God giving, giving God permission to our lives, part of that is going to be about what we don't give permission to. And, and do not conform to the pattern of this world. We're not giving permission to those other things, those things that are ungodly, that are not of God. We're not giving them access to our lives. And that's a challenge for all of us. I say it to myself as well. So that's number two. Do not conform to the pattern of, of this world. The third thing it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Allowing God to refresh and renew your mind. 
We give God access by giving him access to our thoughts. Our thoughts are, are going on all of the time, racing away. Do we give God access and permission to our thoughts for him to renew them, to challenge the things that maybe we've held dear as thoughts and things? Well, yeah, that, that's what I believe. That's what I think. And God says, ah, but, ah, but, what, what am I saying? What does my word tell you? That we are, we need to be giving God permission into those areas. So number one, we offer our body as a living sacrifice. Number two, we do not conform to the pattern of this world. And be, and then number three, we be transformed by the renewing of our minds. That's how we put into action that attitude and that heart of giving God permission. We put it into action. That's the, the, the way that day by day we can be giving God permission and access to our lives. Now there is a payoff in that. In this same, these same verses, the payoff is this. That if you lack direction, if you lack an understanding of where you should go in life, what, what should I do, God? How do I... How do I move forward? Well, it says that if we do these things, if we give God permission in these ways and access to our lives in these ways, it says the payoff is that we will be able to test and approve what God's will is. What God's will is. In other words, we will know what he is saying. We will understand it clearly, step by step, day by day, week by week, month by month. We can begin to understand what God's will is. We can have clarity and wisdom. Here's the benefit of giving God that permission and that access to our lives. We need to be people that, that are open to God in that genuine way. And there are, there are those things that we can do day by day that can allow us to give God that access. Another way that we can give God access is we need to stay connected to, our, to others. Stay connected to others who are of faith, who understand what it is to have a relationship with God. We need to stay connected to them. Now, in this day and age, we have this challenge of physical contact, don't we? We know we can still contact because we can still be in contact. We can still have a rapport because we're doing this now. We have this now, this opportunity to still connect. So the encouragement to you is Psalm 122 verse 1 says, I was rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Well, physically, we're not doing that now, but we can do that in our hearts, in how we position ourselves. Even right now, if you plugged into this, you have positioned yourself to be plugged in to the house of God, to God's house, to God's family, you have positioned yourself. It says, our feet are standing in your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. There, This is where the tribes go up and the tribes of the Lord praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. So we position, it's about positioning yourself. I was glad, I was rejoiced with those who said, let us meet together let us go on zoom let us go on facebook let us go on on to wherever your your forum is let's go on to them and connect and plug in that's one of the ways that we can give god permission and access to our lives as it is our habit it should be our habit that it becomes a, a custom a routine that we we plug in oh we're going to listen to this we're going to plug into this luke 4 verse 16 this idea of habit and practice in giving God permission by connecting him with others. Jesus, in verse 16, sorry, of Luke 4, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and the news about him spread, spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, or he went on Facebook, or he went on Snapchat, or he, he went on Zoom, as was his custom. As was his custom. Let us make it our custom to plug in. Take the opportunity to plug in. Give God access by plugging into others. Connecting with each other. And plugging in to opportunities to receive from God. Receive from others. Plug in. Acts 17 verse 2. It says the, it says the same about Paul the Apostle. It says as was his custom. In Acts 17 verse 2. As was his custom. He went into the synagogue. Or he went onto Facebook. Or he went onto Snapchat. Or he went onto you fill the gap. He went onto these and he plugged in. He plugged in. And lastly, let me, this, this final practical thing that, that I think is, is really key. Acts 1 verses 4 to 5. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What am I talking about there? And we talk about how do we give God access? We need to be open 
to the Holy Spirit. You see, you know that in those times, the, the, the apostles were feeling in fear on their own, feeling a, a sense of shock and loss. And they were told, this is just before this, they, they were told to wait for the promised Holy Spirit because there was a, a sense that actually there was going to be a gap, a gap, a concern as to what they needed to do, how they could survive in their current climate. And what they were told was, this is how you do it. This is what you need to wait for. That even in this moment of uncertainty, just wait. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised. Wait for the gift. It's coming. It's the Holy Spirit. We need to receive from the Holy Spirit. We need to be open to the Holy Spirit. What is in us, the spirit that is in us, is greater than he that is in the world. So we need to receive from the Holy Spirit. Be open. Open your life up to God's spirit, to what that can do in your life to how you can truly be blessed, how you can truly receive and know greater capacity and know greater power in your life. So let me just leave you with those thoughts that actually give God permission, give God permission, have the right heart, have the right attitude and be open to him, that he will ultimately transform your life from the inside out and that you will not be oppressed and controlled by what's around you, but ultimately what's inside you will come out and begin to affect and influence what is going on influence lives, influence the, those people around you, those situations, bring breakthrough for you. I really want you to just be encouraged today that you give God permission because we have access to him. Let him have access to you. Be open to him. Be encouraged today, church. I want you to continue to just plug in to each other, plug into, into him and really know what it is to have God in you, that power, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And you will truly be strengthened day by day and flourish in your relationship with him. And we just commend that to you. Thanks for listening. And we hope to see you again soon. Come and join us again on Zoom midweek and join us again on Sunday. See you again, church. God bless.